Take 20. Is your life kind of complicated? Welcome to One Take, the podcast designed to seek wisdom to live simple, healthy, and happy. We'll get there one take at a time. I'm your host, Jasmine Thomas. Welcome to another episode of One Take, the podcast. I am your host, Jasmine Thomas, and as usual, I am extremely happy to have you here, to have you join me. We are continuing the topic of money, money management, how to be the boss of your money. And today, we are going to focus on how to get out of debt. I told you in my uh, previous podcast, podcast episodes about how we got into financial trouble, how we learn from our mistakes, and how we are now pretty stable when it comes to managing our money, managing our finances, not being in financial distress. And I've shared that with you. If you want to go back to episodes 18 and 17, we're talking about money. Today, I'm going to share with you the process that we used, we were forced to use it to get out of debt. And I want to tell you that I appreciate you guys, your comments, your messages, your calls about the previous uh, episodes, because I know this resonates with a lot of people, because honestly, I think most people are having some financial trouble than not. Most people have some debt and they can get rid of it. Most people have a lifestyle where they spend more money than they really make. Most people have a lot of debt in student loan. Maybe a lot of people, maybe not most people, but a lot of people have a lot of student loan debt and they don't know what to do with it. A lot of people feel pressure because they can't keep up with their friends' lifestyles and they feel like they have to use their credit card in order to fit in. And so they get in debt just to fit in. And I think we've all been there, you know. Um, Who hasn't been around the table when you go out with your friends and somebody starts planning a trip? Uh, Let's go skiing. Let's go to the beach. Let's go here or there. And everyone gets all excited about it. And you guys do. And you guys didn't really plan for it. And here you are swiping your credit card to make your plane reservations and hotel reservations and everything from your meals to the tickets to get into places because you didn't really plan for it. But you wanted to go because, it, of course, who, who doesn't want to be in that trip with best friends enjoying themselves? And I understand that because I have done it. But I also um, learned that using credit card to go on vacation, it's not the wisest decision because you end up paying for that vacation for many years to come. And so many things that we all do with our money and we keep relying on money, on on debt to do the things that we want to do, the things that we haven't planned for financially, the things that today we cannot afford, but the things that we want to do now. And we think it's fine to do them because we have access to credit, we have access to credit cards. But I'm here to tell you, if you continue living your lifestyle, relying on credit, you will never find freedom. You will always be in debt. You will always be a slave of your income, a slave of your job, because you rely on that income to pay all those credit cards And that becomes a lifestyle. And I'm here to tell you there is a better way to live than being a slave to your credit cards and your debts. But it takes some sacrifice. You won't be able to make just a last-minute decision to go with the group on a vacation, on a getaway. You're going to have to plan your life. You're going to have to have the guts to say, I'm going to pass But I would love for us to plan on doing something like that next year. There's nothing wrong with that. They would probably appreciate it. 
But when you are with a group of friends, you know, everything is done in the spur of the minute. And in order for you not to miss out, you make decisions that might end, end up getting you in trouble. And I don't want you to be in trouble. I want you to have a strong future. I don't want you to stress about money. Who wants to spend a life stressing about money, about having enough to pay for their kids' college education, about having enough to retire, maybe help parents who are aging and can't work anymore? But in order to do that, we need to make sacrifices now and we need to be disciplined. So I'm going to share with you what we did, my husband and I, to get out of our financial troubles and get in a pretty good situation. And we were kind of forced to do it. You know, it's not something that we woke up one day and we're like all fired up about it and let's do this, yay. Well, as you guys know, if you've been listening to the previous episodes, my husband lost his job. So our income got cut in half and we had a lifestyle that relied on both incomes. So suddenly something, I was pretty naive, something I never considered, any of us losing our income. Well, here the 2008 recession recession arrived and gave us no option. We had to adjust to living in one income. So I remember it was traumatic And I have overcome the pain because it was a a very painful, stressful, depressing time. But now when I look back, I couldn't be any more grateful that it happened because it showed me the way that I didn't want to live my life. And it showed me a way. It actually forced me into a way of learning on how to better live my life not relying on credit. So the first thing that we were forced to do was to change our mindsets. And with that, once you change your mindset, then you change your behavior. We changed our beliefs on how to manage our money because we didn't have enough coming in. And we needed to make that last. So the first thing that I totally ingrained in my head was I am not going anymore in debt. Debt is not an option. I totally removed it from my mind. And so I looked at our expenses and we had to cut so many things we were doing in order to make it with one income. There was enough money from one income to get us by But we had to cut a lot of things. You know, one of the main things we cut, obviously, I didn't go to the mall. I didn't go shopping. You know, I didn't die, surprisingly. We cut out all eating out. We did not eat out at all for a long time. And it's amazing how much money we were spending on that. Because our weekend activities were going out somewhere and eat and spend money going out to the movies, going out to the mall. You know, we used to live in Phoenix back then, and it was pretty darn hot. And the only thing that we considered doing needed to include covered parking lot. Otherwise, we wouldn't go anywhere. So the malls had garages. So we we would go to the mall and park in the garage for the covered parking lot and go out and eat and go shopping. That was what we did on the weekends, or at least the shopping part was my part. That was my contribution for the weekend fun. (laughs) So we needed to cut all that out. And we survived. We saved a lot of money. We cooked a lot of meals at home, and we still do that. We eat out a couple times a month maybe, but it's not not our weekend fun activity. It's our something special we do. We don't eat out on a every weekend basis. It's just too expensive. And plus the restaurants are always so packed. I don't really enjoy that. But we had to change our mindset. And the point was we will not do anything that equals getting into debt. 
And there were some tough choices because we had friends that wanted to go on vacations. We didn't go. We had family that wanted to go on trips to Disney World and here and there. And they went and we, we didn't go. And that was tough, not just because you want to enjoy that time with the family and the big group, but also because there is that pressure that you have to participate in the family's activities. And if you don't, then it's like you're telling the family you don't care. And sometimes some people in the family misunderstand that. And it's hard for them to understand that you are in a different financial situation and that you cannot afford going on the trips that they might be able to afford then. You will be able to afford them later because you will plan for them and you're going to get out of debt and you're going to have plenty of cash to do whatever you want to do. But at the moment, if you don't have the money, you have to say no. And that was hard sometimes for my family to understand that we didn't have the money to go to Disney World when they wanted everyone to go and that they needed to go and they needed to go and have some fun and we would just do it whenever we had the money. But then we did not have the money. And that was hard for me to let my family know we're not coming but go ahead and make your plans we're not going to disney disney world we don't have seven eight thousand dollars to spend on a vacation we just don't even have the money so making tough choices but there was no option i was going to go in debt for anything ever again you know i i even think today right now i think about debt and it does not I have a hard time visualizing me doing anything that would make me get in debt. It's not an option in my mind. It is never going to happen. So I cannot even imagine it. I cannot even visualize it. That's how much I am committed to never being in debt again. So you need to commit and you need to change your mindset. If you really want to live debt-free... You need to look at your current situation and all those things that are stressing you, you need to commit to never being in a situation that will make you feel that way. All that stress, depression, it was a hard time, you know, never planning for a layoff, suddenly having one person in the household losing their jobs and turning your life upside down because we lost one income. I don't ever want to give my freedom, my peace of mind, my happiness to that. I'm never going to give it up again for that. That's why I'm so grateful that it happened because I learned. I learned how I don't want to live. I learned how I do want to live. And you need to make that decision. If, if your debt has taken over your life, You should know there is a way out. It's going to take a lot of time, discipline, and work, and sacrifices, and a lot of no's to family and friends. But there is a way out. But you have to want it more than anything else. And you have to commit to it. You have to change your mindset. Now, when you change your mindset and you commit to never, ever getting in debt, no matter for what, pair of shoes, going to school, buying a car, I don't include the mortgage debt in this equation because that's a different story. But I'm talking about all the stuff that we want. Your mortgage, your house is more than likely going to go up in value and it's going to be a good investment. If you're renting, then you're just renting. You're not making an investment. So it doesn't matter if you're renting now. I'm not, I'm not against renting. You know, it might be the right thing for you. I'm just saying I have a mortgage, but I'm not considering that as an overwhelming debt that I regret having. That's not the case. I see that as a good investment. When I talk about debt, I'm talking about consumer debt, any credit card, loans, student loans, car loans, um, furniture loans, whatever kind of loan you have to buy something you didn't have cash to pay for. Now, you change your mindset, then it's easier to change your habits because you're not going back to those behaviors that got you into debt. You're not buying impulsively everything you want just because you have a credit card. You're not going to the mall because you're going to be tempted to spend money. You're going to plan if you want to go on vacation and then you're going to save a monthly amount to be able to afford your vacation 
and pay cash for it instead of putting it on a credit card. You need to change your behaviors. And it's hard to expect anybody to change behaviors without getting new information. It's like it's hard to, need to learn a new skill without being taught how to do it. You know, like whenever Microsoft Word rolled out, we had a class in school where they taught us how to use Microsoft, how to use Excel. We used to use just the, the old typewriters, you know, old. <laughs> they were the thing back then when I was in middle school. So we, we used the typewriters. They taught us how to use the typewriters. And then the computers came along, and then Microsoft Word came along. And we had classes dedicated on learning the software. Well, the same principle applies to learning how to live without getting into debt. You need to seek new information. Just like you're listening to me talking about it, that's one way of seeking new information. You can read books. You can listen to people's podcasts. You can read blogs on the topic of living debt-free. Because getting new information opens your mind to possibilities. When you're stuck in your own way of doing things, you're never going to be able to see change. You cannot expect to change. You cannot expect a different result when you don't do anything different. If you continue doing the same thing and expect getting out of debt, it's just not going to happen. It makes no sense. And it sounds like common sense, but we just keep getting into debt thinking one day we're going to be able to pay it off when we get a, a race. And then we get a race and we go buy a nicer car or a nicer house. And so we end up working to pay for all the stuff that we've bought and we become slaves of our jobs because we can't afford to quit them because everything we have is owed. Change your mindset, change your habits, get new information. Continue to listen to this podcast. Go to my blog at www.yasminthomas.com. I'm talking and writing and posting and blogging on many personal finance topics, getting out of that being one of the main ones. So seek new information and don't expect results if you continue doing the same thing. And know that if you are in debt and if you're losing sleep over your debts or your lack of money management skills or inability to get ahead financially, then you need to get new information. You need to learn new skills. You know, I've previously talked about budgeting. Budgeting is one of those basic skills. You really need to know how much money you're bringing in and how much money you're spending and what you're spending it in so that you can stop those purchases that are just a waste of money. One of those habits, this is so, it's going to sound so stupid, but one of those habits you have to change is the spending. Just stop spending money. Start saving it. Once you start saving money, you're going to have money to pay off your debts. It just amazes me, because I've been there, how we think that by repeating the same behavior and spend our money, we're going to end up with more money. I don't understand why we do that. We all do that. And it sounds so stupid to say it, but we all do that. We need to stop spending money. We need to start saving money. Like saving money should be the in thing, you know, not spending it anymore and paying off your debt. But you know what? It's hard to do that because everybody's spending money and everybody's doing stuff. But you need to be the brave person. You need to stop being a ship. Have you been on the highway when there's like traffic jams and everybody is just waiting there for miles and miles? Are you the person that sits in the middle of the highway for an hour in traffic? Or are you the kind of person that opens the Google Maps app and starts looking for alternative ways to get out of the traffic jam. You need to be that person. You need to run your life like a wolf and not a ship. You need to stop following what everybody else is doing because those people 
most of them are not getting financially in shape. They're just doing what everybody else is doing. They're financing cars because everybody else is doing. They're getting in debt because they got a credit card offer in the mail. They're carrying a balance on their credit cards because it's at 0% financing. Just because it's there, it doesn't mean you have to do it. And having those credit cards, it's only a temptation. It opens an option for you to use them in a moment of desperation when you want something and you want it now. And you forget that you are committed to living debt-free. Having an option there is not a good thing. So stop acting like a sheep. Become a wolf. Become a leader for yourself and for others. Now, it's easier to become a leader if you stop comparing yourself to others. Because that's really dangerous. When we stop when we start comparing yourself to, to others, what other people have, then we put an emphasis, we place our attention on what we don't have. And we lose sight of what we do have. We stop being content and we start being envious. Now we're unhappy. Now our focus in is in how are we going to get more stuff and how am I going to buy that? And why does everybody else has it and I don't have it? When you're feeling that way, when you're starting to compare yourself to your neighbors or whatever people at work have, then you're going to lose. You need to focus on what you do have. I just um, wrote a blog post about the crazy idea of living debt-free. And I welcome you to go to the blog and read it, um, yasminthomas.com forward slash debt dash free. And I tell you the story of how I heard the Dave Ramsey show for the first time. And I was very skeptical about his, you know, crazy idea of living debt free and how people were calling in with their confessions and how messed up their financial lives were. And I continued listening. And the more that I listened, the more it made sense. But that was new information for me. That was information that was contrary to everything else that I had been taught. I had been taught that having debt was fine, that it helped your credit report, that you wanted to have some sort of uh, credit card history so that you could have a good credit history and a good credit score and you could finance cars and you could finance homes and Having a credit history and having debt meant that you were a worthy person because you were going to be able to prove that you were responsible with money. And that's what I believed because that's what many people on TV, on books, everywhere said. That was the only truth that I knew until about five years ago when I listened to Dave Ramsey and he's talking about living debt free. And I'm just thinking, who is this crazy guy? I mean, who can even live debt free? Who can save money to pay for a car or a house? Or why in the world would you not want to have a credit card? I mean, credit cards are good. They can help you in in times of need. Plus, you can use them online and do all your shopping and reservations and everything. I mean, I was set on the idea that having debt, some sort of debt and credit cards was good. And then I started listening to the show more often. And the more I listened, the more the idea of not having any debt made sense. And so one day I'm like, I'm going to give this a shot. And I started living, you know, I started reading a lot of his books and many books that he recommended. And I started living my life the way he proposed to live it, debt free. And it's amazing how different and better my situation is now. I've talked to you guys before about how I drove the same car for 10 years or more. And sometimes I was ashamed of driving the same car because, you know, I used to be a TV reporter and everywhere I went, other reporters pulled in driving Mercedes Benz and BMWs and Lexuses and luxury cars. And I would arrive to the office on my old Dodge Neon. And I even 
one time this co-worker was making fun of me because I was driving that car. But I would just listen to the Dave Ramsey show saying that you don't have to have a car payment. It's better if you save your money and pay cash for another car. And I'm like, you know, I'm kind of liking that idea. I like not having a car payment and saving my money. Plus, I like the idea now of buying a new car and paying cash for it. I thought it was the craziest idea the first time I heard it. Well, I ended up doing that last summer. And this summer we are, um, if you're listening to this at a different time, this is the summer of 2017. We are shopping around for another car for my husband, who's been driving the same car for 12 years. And it's about time for him to get a new car. But he's been driving it for so long because I just got set on the idea we are never, ever financing another car. And when we did purchase my car last year for cash, I think it was a great learning opportunity for both of us to realize that we didn't need to rely on credit. We didn't need to have a payment. I much rather having that money and saving it and then buying a car outright than having a car payment for the, la- for the next seven or five years. I had my, my only car payment that I've had for five years. It was like part of, it was an item that was set in my budget and I just hated seeing it. You know, every single month the money drafted automatically for five years How pathetic is that? I would think, what could I do with $300 a month, extra money? What if I invested this? How much money would would this be in 10 years? How much money would this be in 20 years? Instead, I am buying a car who's going down in value, and I need a car. Well, I didn't need to have another car payment. I did believe, before I started looking for new information, I did believe that a car payment was like part of your last name. It was attached to you forever. You know, it was something you were going to have forever because I was told that cars didn't last, that you wanted to be getting a new car every four or five years because you wanted to be secure on the highways and you didn't want to be stranded by driving an antique car. That's another lie that I was told and believed. And you hear those messages here and there. But I defied it. So I drove the same car and paid cash for another car. Listen, if I could do it, having gone through a layoff, sticking to a budget, stopping going to the mall, and stopping going out to eat, there's no reason why you couldn't do it. But how bad do you want it? How enticing it is for you living debt-free. It sounds like a crazy idea. At the beginning, it will always sound like a crazy nonsense idea because it did for me. But once you start practicing it, it becomes a pretty nice lifestyle. It gives you options. Having money gives you options. You know, the other day there was a car that got um, repoed in my neighborhood. And I live in a nice neighborhood. What does that tell you? There's people who live in nice houses and drive nice cars they can't afford. And they get repoed when you don't pay them. And that's a lesson on really understanding that it doesn't matter what it looks like. You never really know the situation of the other people that has what you don't have. What you wish you could have. Because listen up. I am all okay for you to buy expensive and nice things, but there's two, two types of people who buy expensive and nice things. They're really rich. They're people who really have a lot of money and they can buy it and no problem. The people who can really afford it and they're really broke. Those who have gotten into so much debt just to pretend to be rich. To live a lifestyle they can't really afford. And what happens? The really broke people start looking to other people and they just get into more trouble because they are now comparing themselves. They don't have the income to live the lifestyle of the wealthy, but they want to pretend that they are wealthy and live like wealthy people when all their facade is finance through loans, credit cards, 
how many equity lines of credit, who knows what else. If you are about to compare yourself to others because they seem to have better stuff that you have than you have, take a pause. Just think. There's a chance they might be really rich and they can afford it, but there is possibly a higher chance that they're broke and it's just a facade and one day it's going to cut up with them and they're going to end up in big money trouble. Now, if you want to make being wealthy, being in good financial shape, a plan for your life, then you need to start planning and prioritizing. You change your mindset, you change your habits, you receive new information, and you stop comparing yourself to everybody else. It's time now for you to start planning and prioritizing. Plan how you're going to spend your money. Remember, you got to do a budget. doesn't have to be perfect, but just make sure you know how much money is coming in, going out every month, and adjust from there. And start planning. If you want to be in good financial shape, you need to plan every big purchase. I'm going to assume you have money in your budget every month for your monthly purchases. But vacations, weddings, college, cars, everything that requires a big investment or a big expense, you need to plan ahead. And you need to plan ahead for many years. Like I said, we have a monthly savings fund when we put money aside for vacations, for car repairs, car purchases, and we just let that money accumulate. We don't use it. That's on the side from having our emergency fund. We have this other fund for those kind of expenses so that when we want to go to Disney World, we actually have the seven or $8,000 that we need for the 10-day vacation. Or when we want to buy a car, we actually have the cash to go in and find a good deal and buy a cash and buy it for cash. But you need to be disciplined and that money, you cannot touch it for anything. It cannot become your shopping fund. It cannot become your spur of the moment fund. You need to leave it there. You need to let it grow and just use it for what you planned on using it. And if there's other things you want to buy that you need to plan for, then you need to add that amount to your monthly savings account. And it really is not that hard to save that money if you don't have debt. Because like in 2017, the, la- the latest data says that the average car payment for a person with decent credit score, which is in the range of the 601 to 660 points, it's about $525. So you have decent credit score and a car payment of 525 every month. I would like to know if you can afford to save $500 a month today. Can you, do you have extra $500 a month today? Imagine if you just save that money instead of having a car payment. Imagine that you decided to get rid of your car payment and you drove a car that you paid cash for and instead you saved that money. How much could you get with that money? How many vacations could you pay cash for? How many... How much could you invest? How much could you save for your kid's college? How much could you save for a wedding or a big purchase or a house? But because we are so enamored with our vehicles, we spend all this money. That's just the average, the 525. I mean, there's people whose car payments are 800, 900, 1200 dollars, depending on what you drive and how much you like to show off. So then you start seeing your life through the lens of priorities. Would you rather driving a nice car now that you're paying every month $500 to $700 on, or would you driving just an okay car, save that money, and use it for better things in the future? Priorities look different for everyone. You know, I have a family, I have kids, so one of my priorities 
it's saving for my kids' college. One of my priorities is saving for vacation, saving for the purchase of a vehicle. But you know, once we purchase the second one in the next few weeks, then we're going to have that much money we were saving to prioritize something else. Probably a vacation. This summer, we didn't go on vacation so that we could, sa- we could save that money for the car. So we're planning on taking a na- nice vacation next year because we made the sacrifice this year not to go on vacation. So the priorities will change. And as long as you have your money committed to what you want to do with it and not paying for what you already did with it, because remember, you got in debt to go on vacation or go on to meals, eat out at restaurants and stuff. As long as you have the saying on how you're spending your money, you will be able to plan ahead a better financial future for yourself. This takes me to my next and final step in getting out of debt, living debt-free, and that is committing to it. Committing to pay cash for whatever you buy. You have to have the money. And when I say cash, I'm not talking about, you know, having $20,000 and driving to the car dealership and buying a car for cash, just have the money in the bank and write a check or swipe your debit card and pay cash for it. And if you like carrying money around, be my guest. Just don't spend money you don't have already for that purchase. Make it your lifestyle. Commit to it. The more you do it, the less you're even going to consider the possibility of having a credit card. Like I've told you before, I don't have a credit card. I haven't missed it. I don't need it. My debit card, people complain about debit cards. I've never had an issue with mine. They are accepted everywhere. We've rented cars. We've rent, We've uh, reserved hotels. I've purchased stuff online. I haven't had any issues. So maybe we need to get better information on how to use our debit card so we don't have a credit card that becomes later up an option to go in debt. This is the message that I have for you guys today. And and I hope that's one that uh, makes you reflect on where you are now, gives you assurance that your life can be better if you want it to be better. If your debt and financial situation are stressing you, depressing you, and keeping you up at night, you need to wake up, take control of your life, make a plan, commit. Commit to living debt-free. Commit to paying your debts. Commit to saying no. Commit to not comparing yourself to others. Just stay focused. Pay off your debts and live in peace. Be the boss of your money. Own your money, your time, your options, your decisions. Don't feel trapped in a job you don't like because you need the income to pay for your debt. It's just stuff, but you already purchased it. And you have to be responsible and you have to pay it back. And like I said, there's ways to do it and you can do it. Wow, it's a deep topic, guys. Um, I, th- I hope this helps you. I hope this gives you guidance on what I believe it's a better way of living your life rather than being in debt, being the boss of your money, your decisions, and your future. So with this, I'm going to invite you guys to leave me a written review and a rating on iTunes or whichever podcast player you're using to listen to this podcast. Those reviews are very important because, number one, it helps iTunes know which shows people like and why, and that could help the show get positioned and get better views by other people, get more exposure. So if you're enjoying this topic, share it with your friends, through social media, share it with your family, share it with your spouse, share it with your fiance, boyfriend. These are important topics to talk about 
when you're married and before you're getting married. And also leave me a written review. Now, you can also subscribe if you haven't already to get the feed automatically downloaded to your iPhone or your Google Player, whatever you use to listen to it. So you can subscribe on iTunes and you can also go to my blog, www.yesminthomas.com to subscribe. And you can subscribe for both the podcast and the blog posts. It's two different feeds. So you can choose which one if you want them both, which I recommend, or if you want one or the other. And always stay in touch. You know, I am on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at yasminthomas.com. If there are questions you have, if there are topics you would like me to talk about, feel free to send me an email as well. My email address is podcast at yasminthomas.com. All right, guys, time to say goodbye. I really appreciate your time. I hope this is helping you get into better financial shape, becoming the boss of your money. Till the next time, remember, keep it simple. I'm going to talk to you guys on the next take.